Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you everyone. I'm going to be talking about a horror movie. It's called The Grudge from 2020. Now there will be no spoilers, no plot reveals. I do want to talk about the original or the 2004 version called The Grudge. It was directed by Takeshi Simzu, who directed the Japanese version. I enjoy that movie. It stars Sarah Miguel, Michelle Galar, Bill Punham, I believe. I'm okay with non-linear storylines. I'm okay with um, a little more sophisticated story or you have to figure things out. Horror movies, it can make it real interesting as you get into it and you're trying to figure things out. So the 2004 version, I enjoy there was a sequel, maybe two. I kind of enjoyed the second one here and there. The third one, I can't say too much about. I don't remember very well. So I got to watch The Grudge, which came out in January 2020. And it is a storyline that runs on the side of the 2004 and the sequels. Basically, it kind of runs alongside what's going on in 2004 and the sequels which are different years and the grudge from 2020 also uses a non-linear storyline and you're going to get the timelines um not running linear but that's how the story is supposed to be set so you have your grudge in 2004 the two remakes which came out afterwards and the Grudge 2020 is saying we're running alongside those movies. So I'll get to the nitty gritty with this without major plot reveals, so and so. I'm always down for a good horror movie. It's one of my favorite genres. I look for them. I make sure I can get to see them. Uh, even if, even some bad B movies I'm known for watching. So, like I said before, I'm okay with non-linear storylines, figuring things out. I'm even okay with that wow ending. So, sometimes uh, you'll go online and you'll look the grudge ending explained. And there's a whole genre like that. People do a good job of it. And I could see people not liking that. And I'm not saying this does that. But I'm, I'm just trying to give the feel of what horror movies... I'll tolerate things that would be nitpicks for some people, maybe even deal breakers to some extent. But what I'm noticing and what I don't like is this tendency to have loud bangs and loud soundtrack. Once in a while, it's great if it serves the story. Every once in a while, yeah, a good jump scare, it'll get you. But when it's overused, it just distracts me from this non-linear story that's running this alongside the other ones. I don't think it's um, a very skillful art to have super loud bangs and crashes and sound effects keyed up with music and done separately once in a while they're good so you'll have a music cue that slowly builds in and it gets loud fine uh, a loud bang when it's called for if a, a ghost or an entity moves something and crashes it but it becomes repetitive and I think that hurts this movie because as someone who likes to delve into these movies and figure things out I I just see myself getting a little annoyed and I look at it as a trend in horror movies on the whole because it, let's say I did five movie reviews that are horror. I mean, I've, I must have watched 20. And I'm saying going on the sites, looking at uh, all the B movies and here and there, 
you know, catching a in this theater. But I don't have confidence in these type of horror movies. And when you look at the producers, you got Sam Raimi, Raimi and Tappert. Now, the first one in 2004 got the director from the original Japanese version. And it was a success. If I'm correct, the original grudge in 2004 was made for like 10 million and gross like 180. I don't see the benefit in overloading a movie like this, which is you know running sidelong with another couple of movies and throwing in loud bangs and crashes. And that's what I take from this. I take an annoyance. Um, I want to settle in, watch a movie, get dragged in. And I, I, I could even see when I'm watching a movie with a friend and the ending happens and they roll their eyes, they shake their head or they're confused that the, the fade in and fade out is now a time jump or you're seeing a flashback or what happens at the end of the movie. And I find that intriguing sometimes and I'm, I can understand if people don't. But it's a okay movie, maybe, that just annoys me a little because I want to like the franchise and want to catch a good horror movie, get a little, you know, it's a little spooky. Uh, you can do so much with creepy visuals with no sound. Um, things coming out of the dark shadows into the light. Things that you see moving off screen or being watched. I love it all. And I do enjoy once in a while a little jump, a little sound cue that blares. But I'm getting annoyed with the... Just the loud banging, crashing, accompanied by a sound effect now that's loud. The Grudge 2020. Pretty... Okay, movie. I wanted to get into the story. I was interested in how how it was fitting in. And the execution just didn't live up to the um, my hopes of at least a revitalization to the franchise or a, a renew my interest in um, watching maybe even more. But I don't think it did well. So those are my thoughts on The Grudge, which came out in 2020. I don't want to get anybody confused with The Grudge from 2004, the sequels. However, this is a story that runs sidelong with those, as it tells its story non-linearly, I guess. Uh, so take it for what you will. I'll give it another shot when it comes out on... Blu-ray or DVD or good copies are out there. But I, I'm a little disappointed. Check out The Grudge 2020 if you want. I'll talk to everybody later. Take care.